Good morning, everyone. This is Father Adam Westfall, pastor of Holy Spirit Parish in Creston and St. Edward's Parish in Afton. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning, either on YouTube or on KSIB Radio. Thanks to everyone at KSIB Radio for making the broadcast of this Mass possible. Announcements for September 27th. We've recently launched a new website, www.uccat.org which stands for Union County Catholics, www.uccat.org. On our website, you can find links to a copy of this Mass, you can find our online donation portal, and you can also find a number of other online resources. This week, we'd like to feature a new resource that we recently added. It helps benefit St. Malachy's School. Many of us shop on Amazon with some frequency. Imagine letting each one of those purchases benefit St. Malachy's School. If you go to our website, www.uccat.org, there is a link to Amazon. If you click that link and make purchases on Amazon, a percentage of your purchase will go to the school. But you have to click that link first for them to count. So go to www.uccat.org, click the link to Amazon, and then make your purchases as you normally would. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and our school benefits. Thank you for your support. Mass will begin shortly. Good morning. Welcome to Holy Spirit Parish. Please stand and join our opening song, 511, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, 511. Sing, sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to Him and bless His name. Mercy He has shown us, His love is forever. Faithful to the end of days. Come then, ye all nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Sing of the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless His name. Power He has wielded, honor in His garment, rising from the snares of death. His word he has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life he now gives to all. Come then, ye all nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. So we gather this morning as a people of faith. Let us prepare our hearts to receive all the good things that the Lord has for us by calling to mind our sins and asking for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thank for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the whole High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are, you, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. truth and tense me for you are God my Savior remember your mercies O Lord remember your compassion O Lord and your love are from of gold the sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. 
In your kindness remember me, because your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, the, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, every, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord.
I am sure by now that you have heard that yesterday President Trump named Amy Coney Barrett as his nominee for the Supreme Court. Um, it's going to be probably unfortunate how our nation handles uh, that process going forward. Uh, there will be a lot of smearing, I can only imagine, if history, recent history, has been any um, indicator of what we are looking forward to in the future. Look what we can anticipate in the future. Before, the press and our society has an opportunity to completely eviscerate this particular candidate, I would like to speak this morning about the community that she belongs to, the people of praise. It's been portrayed in the media, if you've seen the headlines, as a fringe group, a rogue group, the inspiration for Margaret, Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale uh, that became popular in the, in the, the, as a TV series, uh, and so on and so forth. There's been a lot of vitriol already about this particular community, and it's to that that I would like to speak today, because that vitriol is misplaced. I myself have had much experience with charismatic communities. I know them intimately. The university that I attended was charismatic in nature, my undergraduate. The missions group that I was a part of after my undergraduate studies was also charismatic and ecumenical, meaning it was very uh, open to the spirit moving in not only Catholic circles, but Protestant as well. In fact, the mission group that I was a part of tried to live out the message of unity that we hear in the scriptures today in their day-by-day -day activity, always considering the interests of another more than oneself. This played out two times that come to my memory. First, uh, when we were praying over one another, it was part of this group. You know, you lay hands on one another and you pray. Just the Spirit may come into the person's life. I was doing this, practicing as a new one, new, a newbie in this sort of prayer, practicing over someone who I didn't realize wasn't Catholic. And so in my prayer, I'm invoking Mary and the saints as I'm praying over this person. And he, I can feel, he tenses under my hand and there's kind of this hesitance. And I, I realized later he was tensing because he wasn't Catholic and he wasn't used to that type of intercession, asking the saints to pray for him. And so I had to grow there a little bit, thinking, whoops, I stepped over a boundary there that I shouldn't have uh, in praying for this person. Other times, you know, we, of course, invoke the saints and there's, there's that opportunity, but that was not the moment his heart was not open to that particular grace. On the other hand, this, this group that was run by evangelical Protestants had its own learning curve to do from time to time in a spirit of unity. Uh, one of the fasts, the prayers that they encouraged us to do one time was to fast from Easter until Pentecost, praying for the Holy Spirit. It's a time of intercessory prayer, a time where this worldwide organization that I was a part of was going to fast and pray. Now, the fact that it was a Protestant organization uh, was, it ran into some speed bumps and some hiccups, some obstacles uh, to that unity that they were striving for. In this particular case, if you know your theology well, you know that Catholics are forbidden, prohibited from fasting in the octave of Easter, the eight days following Easter Sunday. It's a great feasting day. It's a great solemnity, those eight days. And so we're prohibited from fasting. And so we had to approach our leadership, the Catholics of this group, and say, we really want to support the mission that you're doing, but we can't. And there were profuse apologies by the leadership, realizing that they hadn't considered that aspect of the Catholic faith when they called for this fast. And so in the future, they would ask, okay, are there any feast days coming up? Are there any things that we should avoid as we uh, plan that we, should, that we should be aware of? And there was this great dialogue that happened. Indeed, the community lived in a great harmony, always striving 
for unity, always respecting each other's boundaries as much as we could, uh, and then learning when we didn't to overcome uh, those particular um, challenges to our unity in a way that was truly uh, building, truly spiritual. One of the groups that we worked with when I was on this missions group was called the European Network of Communities, where all of these charismatic communities would gather for this conference and share stories of faith, would share stories of service, would share stories of how they were working to bring about this great unity, this renewal in the body of Christ, meant to heal divisions. And so it was inspiring to me to see so many people of different faith backgrounds coming together in a common spirit that would manifest itself in prayer, in praise, and giving oneself over to God and the Holy Spirit. The work of that community, those communities that we interacted with, that we were a part of when we were hosting this European network of communities, those communities went out and did amazing things in the societies around them, not only transforming the people around them to um, know and respect and love the things of God, of Jesus Christ, but also living their lives in profound service to their communities, even those who weren't believers. Many of them hosted dinners where they invited the poor and those who couldn't afford it. Many of them got involved in other activities of social concern. And the heart, the fuel that made their service possible was their membership in this ecumenical community. And so having known all that, laying the foundation then for what these communities are, we're confronted in the media in the coming days with accusations that they're cults or that they have some sort of, uh, you know, really bad tendencies in them. It's not true. Uh, on, the, not, on the whole, it's not true. These, these groups, they really seek to enliven people's, enrich people's lives, give them the spirit of God, allow them to experience what it is to live in community that's working for the reunification of of the body of Christ in whatever way the Spirit envisions for that. These communities spring up and they they gather together in prayer and they really advance the kingdom of heaven. As far as this particular group that's going going to be mentioned, I'm sure, very frequently in the coming weeks, the people of praise is one of these charismatic communities, one of these Christian communities. I called out to one of my friends, sent a message to my friends, in South Bend, and sure enough, she sent back a list of people that she knew that were involved with this group, this people of praise. And in fact, I went to undergrad with a number of them. I know them, and I remember them to be very noble souls, very sincere in their beliefs, and very willing to pour themselves out in the service not only of their families, but of the society around them. They were very good people when I knew them back in undergrad, and from everything that I've heard, that goodness has continued. In fact, if you look at what this people of praise does as a Christian community, uh, they're a covenant community, meaning they've made a a covenant to one another to live in this harmony, to live in this community that will pour uh, pour themselves out in love one to another, that will meet each other's needs, both spiritually and financially, that will make sure that this community Um, experiences long and lasting friendships all together uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. They come together, they pray, they go out and they live their lives in service. It has grown now to include over um, 1,700 members in 22 cities across the U.S., Canada, and the Caribbean. And in 1981, it established three schools to help form young people. And while the young people may not be members of this community, they are formed in ways of thinking, of analyzing, of exploring the deeper questions of life. And most recently, they have, in 2002, been inspired by the Holy Spirit to pour themselves out into the most impoverished areas of the world. They, they began moving into some of America's poorest neighborhoods, And since then, they write on their website, we have lived closely with our neighbors and worked together to help meet pressing and neighborhood needs. Our efforts include running summer camps for hundreds of children, repairing neighborhood homes, hosting prayer meetings, growing healthy food in an urban farm, and establishing a private elementary school. And it has earned the praise of the local leaders saying they've done a lot to turn crime around, that the crime rates have dropped with the presence of this community. 
Indeed, I've witnessed these charismatic communities, not this one, uh, but doing just the things that this group has said. And they are truly powerful in a community. They bring about a revitalization, a revival. They bring about a deeper hope. They bring about a peace in the people that they interact with. They are indeed phenomenal. In fact, my experience with these communities was so profound. My uh, encounter with the Spirit in these groups that when I was ordained a priest, I came to the altar of God at my first Mass. And uh, if, if you, uh, you may not know, you may know, uh, but each Mass a priest is able to offer one specific intention, one prayer as the intention for the Mass. That is his main prayer throughout the Mass, and it's always for some person. And so I was thinking of all the people who provided uh, the avenue for me to become a priest, who all enriched my formation, who all impacted my life of faith along my journey. And out of all those people to offer my first Mass for, I chose uh, Bruce and his family, who was the leader of that group in Austria, that mission group. Bruce Cluett and his wife got my first intention, and his, uh, and his uh, family got my first Mass intention because the work that he did as a Protestant was so impactful to me in my formation uh, that it, it forever shaped the way that I approach the world. It forever shaped the way that I accept the call of Jesus Christ. Without the work that that group did, without the missionary activity that that work taught me, I don't know that I would have been able to hear the voice of the Lord calling me to the priesthood. And so my first Mass intention went for Bruce and his family. Phenomenal leader and a wonderful a man that has had a very much impact on the world around him in, in ways that he probably never foresaw being raised uh, as an evangelical Protestant. So this day, as we contemplate this prayer for unity that happens in our second reading uh, from St. Paul, uh, where he's asking us to be of the same spirit, to share compassion and mercy, to, com to be of the same mind with the same love, united in heart and thinking one thing, we can meditate on the power that these charismatic communities are having, these impact these charismatic communities are having in our world, thanking the Lord that his spirit is working in them to reunify a divided body of Christ, to bring peace to our communities and to restore the kingdom of heaven on earth as the Lord intends. We can thank the Lord for that, and we can also pray that he may grace us to be a part of that wonderful mission, that he may allow us to draw together in a similar community, that we may work with our uh, separated brethren, uh, those who do not share the Catholic faith, uh, for the betterment of our world and for the coming of the kingdom of God. Let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Amen. As a people of faith, we come before our God and present to him humbly our needs and our petitions. For the shepherds of the church, for the pope, bishops, and priests, that their faith-based teaching and preaching will lead all God's people into a rich heritage of grace-filled unity, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For blessings upon our country and on all who call America their home, that the justice, integrity, and principles that our nation was founded upon will be cherished and preserved. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Christian families will be strengthened to face every challenge and difficulty, that their moral compass will be shaped by Christian values, and that they will grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are suffering from the coronavirus, for those who have died of it, and those who mourn them, and for all on the front lines who directly face daily challenges due to the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who work the land and begin harvesting, for those suffering from the effects of drought, the derecho, and other natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who gather at this table, searching for healing and hope, Help us live in the sure knowledge of your love and care for us, and that you are always working in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord. During this time of crisis, we turn to the Lord for hope and healing. Let us pray together a prayer for the sick, especially those suffering from the coronavirus. Loving God, You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to heal the sick. We ask you to come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus crisis, that we too may experience your healing love. We ask you to heal those who are sick, calm those who are living in fear, be with those who have died, and comfort their families. Inspire health professionals to aid them in their healing work. Guide national leaders to lead and make decisions with wisdom. Help us to always be aware of your presence as we place our trust in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Loving God, hear these prayers we present to you. Grant them, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Please join us singing our offertory song 567, What Wondrous Love Is This? brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
praise and glory. So. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, as with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those remotely listening or watching this broadcast, unable to be here to receive the most precious body of Christ, we invite you to participate in a spiritual communion with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, at least come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join us singing our communion song, 360, Remember Your Love, 360. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life and my refuge when I call God fears. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your people. And have mercy on us, Lord. Throughout, O oh Lord, upon her sinfulness, then who can stand? But with you there is mercy and forgiveness, and a guiding hand. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. O Lord, hear the sound of my call and answer me. My heart cries much for the very presence. It is you I seek. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your people and have mercy on us, Lord. I've seen sentimentals wait upon the day, light and wait for the Lord. The trust in your kindness and redemption and your faithful word. Remember your love. And your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your people and have mercy on us, Lord. Before all the mountains were begotten and earth took shape. Even then, O Lord, we were in your refuge throughout every age. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your people and 
have mercy on us, Lord. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. As we go forth from this celebration, let's sing 414, Go Make a Difference. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the salt of the earth, called to let the people see the love of in you and me. We are the light of the world, not to be hidden but be seen. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference. In